Hey folks, Mavs Dad here back with another watch review. I've got something really unique for you today. Today we have the Victorinox Swiss Army Night Vision 50 meter quartz chronograph model number 241728. And before I get into it, I want to thank Justin over at Victorinox for this review unit. If you like this watch, make sure you go over to Victorinox website and pick one up. They have many other models to choose from and offer free shipping on all orders over $100. They're a great bunch of folks to deal with and I highly recommend you check them out. Now, as usual, we'll open this thing up, look at the fit and finish, the features and the functions, the build quality, and then I'll give you my overall impressions of this really, really unique watch. So really nice Swiss Army watch box. I love their watch boxes. These things are just so nice and so well made. I know it's kind of a silly thing to like a watch box, but man, these things are nice. And I reviewed a Inox a few weeks ago, and I still can't figure out what these watch boxes are made out of. I mean, they, they seem perfect in the fact there are no seams. There's no nothing. I can't tell if they're like a wood with a plastic coating or something. I don't know what it is, but man, I love them. So anyway, here you go. There's a watch. And of course you get your instruction and warranty booklet. Now this basically has all the different Victorinox models in it. So you're going to get the same instruction booklet for each Victorinox watch you buy. They're just different sections inside here for each different watch. And of course the warranty portions in the back. So there you go with that. Take the watch off the pillow here. As you can see, man, I love this watch box. It's just a really, really nice watch box. It's got a little pillow portion back there. Ooh, that feels nice. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. All right, let's put all this back. Let's talk about this thing. This is a really cool watch. Really, really interesting watch. And I just had to review it. All right, let's say goodbye to the really nice watch box. There you go. Man, this thing is nice. All right. Now, as usual, on the left-hand side of the screen, we'll go ahead and put all of the, uh, the basic specs. You're looking at a 42 millimeter stainless case. It's 14 millimeters thick, and I'll talk about the thickness here in a little bit. That's on a 20 millimeter bracelet. It's uh, 50 meters water resistant. This is not a diver, folks. I mean, 50 meters is only 165 feet, so this is not really meant to dive at all. We're talking about pool, uh, beach. And when you get back from the beach, if you go to the beach with this thing on, you're definitely going to wash it off, get all that salt water off here. So, you know, pool, shower, you're fine, but anything more than that, you want to kind of stay away from. And it's got a uh, Swiss Ronda Quartz movement. It's got twin LED lights, and that's kind of its claim to fame, and I'll talk all about that stuff later. Um, it's got a flashlight. It's got an end-of-life indicator and a locator indicator. That's the little red LED down here at 6 o'clock. Uh, it's got a non-screw-down crown. Again, this isn't a dive watch. It does have a sapphire crystal, which is really nice in a watch in this move and this price. Uh, you kind of expect it for a watch in this price point, so it's not you know a shock, but I'm really glad that they put that in there. Uh, it's got Super Luminova all over the indexes and hands, and it is Swiss made, you know, being a Victrinox watch. So there you go. So this thing is really interesting. Uh, first, I guess we'll talk about the case and bracelet, then we'll get into all the goodies later. Uh, really, really nice case. Highly, highly polished case. I don't think there's any one brushed area on this thing. I mean, even the, uh, the bezel, the case, the bracelet... The pushers, the crown, you got a nice signed crown here. Uh, the crown guards, I mean, everything in this watch is polished. Really, really nice job. I mean, it's got a, a, a nice little bling, but not being not being too much. Um, just a nice case. Really, really highly polished case. Uh, the bracelet, again, nice bracelet. This bracelet has a, is a deployment clasp, or what I like to call a butterfly bracelet, as you can see. And already I'm having a little bit of a problem. I'm not a big fan of these bracelets, of this type of clasp. I don't like this, this butterfly action here. That sounded kind of like porn. Anyway, I don't like this butterfly action. It just, I, I think it's just overly complicated. I just don't think you need this. I think just the regular style bracelet with the clasp would be fine. I mean, it looks cool. Yeah, it looks great. But I'm just not a big fan of these. These, these deployment clasps are what they call, or what I like to call, butterfly bracelets. I just think they're overly complicated and you don't really need them. Um, I know it's kind of a little bit of a pet peeve, but again, to me, I just, I'm just not a big fan of them. And this watch doesn't fit right out the box, so I can't try it on for you, unfortunately. So there you go. There's your deployment clasp. 
or butterfly bracelet. Um, there's the back of the watch. Nothing spectacular. You have some laser etched stats of the watch on the watch case back there. Um, but nothing really interesting going on with the watch case. But again, the bracelet, not my favorite type of bracelet for a watch. That's just, you know, that's just me. Uh, let's talk about the watch face. Extremely legible. Normally, I, I'm not a big fan of black on white where the, ha where the hands are white. I'm sorry, white on white where the hands are white and the face of the watch is white. I think it, it's a little bit hard to read that way. I like the contrast of a black face and white hands. But because this has got a lot of black outlining on all of the, um, of the indexes and hands, and you've got some black right here on the subdials, it actually is very, very easy to read, which is nice. And just a really, really good looking face. All the indexes are applied. You have the applied Victronox logo up here at 12 o'clock. Um, everything is applied. You can see the three and the nine are applied. And like I said, all the indexes. Just a fantastic looking watch. The date window down here at six o'clock is extremely legible. I love how legible that date window is. Um, fancy, I mean, fancy looking watch, but very simple at the same time, if that makes any sense. Um, now, if you notice at the top here, you have night vision. I'm sorry, you have time vision. And, but the watch is actually called the night vision. If you can see right there, it's night vision. So basically this is your flashlight and the time vision, when you press this button, this is the magic button down here. When you press that button, that's gonna illuminate the whole dial. Now I don't wanna get into that right yet. I have a couple more things to talk about. I know that's why y'all wanna watch this review just to check out this James Bondish type of watch. Uh, but that's, that's what those two are for. You've got night vision here and you've got time vision right there. There are a couple pet peeves about this watch that do kind of bug me. The buttons, the pushers, are for some reason kind of hard to push. Um, I would understand that maybe if this was a dive watch, maybe if like, they were like screw down pushers, but these aren't screw down obviously. They take some effort to actually push them in. I think they could maybe figure out some way to engineer it where these aren't so quite, you know, quite so hard to push. Um, this watch has two batteries in it. It has one for the Ronda movement and the other battery is dedicated to just the light functions. Now, with that being said, it makes the watch a little bit thicker, as you can tell. It's it's not a thin watch, and you've got to replace all those batteries uh, when they wear out. And it's just, you know, I wouldn't want somebody cracking open my Swiss-made watch to change a couple batteries. I would want to send this back to Victorinox and have them do it. And with that being said, it's just an added, you know, it's just kind of a pain to have to send your watch off and get it done by the dealer. Um... You know, again, with, this is a very nice watch, and I don't want to, you know, just kind of entrust it to somebody over at Walmart to change out these batteries and trust that Walmart has those batteries in stock. So that's a pet peeve. I'm not a big fan of, of anything that solely relies on just battery power. I like automatics. I like kinetics. I'm not, and I like solar because you don't have to worry about it. I don't like watches that actually have a physical battery that needs to be changed. And in this case, it needs two of them. So that's a pet peeve. Um, and that's really it for the pet peeves, surprisingly, which is, you know, was really good. So anyway, sorry, right, let's talk about the magic here and I'm gonna go ahead and dim the light. I'm going to dim the light. Sound like I was back in a seventies disco. Anyway, I'm gonna dim the light and we're going to, first of all, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and show you the loom. We're going to test out the loom on this thing. Let's hit it with the trusty mag light. And normally I hit this for about, eh about five ten seconds it'll give you a good indication what it's like when like say you know you come out of a sunny you come out of the you know come out of a sunny area then go into a dark area this is how bright it's going to be so there you go pretty bright i like that color nice not super bright we're not talking about you know seiko's luma bright here but bright enough uh and very well applied i like it now, like I said, it's not going to last very long. It'll probably last a few hours and, and dim to about 50% brightness. But, uh, I mean, it's nice. So there you go. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and check out these functions. Now, there's about, I think, five or six of these lighting functions. In fact, let's go ahead and turn the light back on here real quick. All right. You know what? Let's turn the light back off. Only problem with turning the light back off, sometimes you have to worry about focus issues. But anyway, all right, you press it one time. Now the pusher over here is at eight o'clock. You press it one time. There's your blue dial lighting. Really, really nice, evenly spread blue LED. Lights at the dial, really, really nice. And I'll do it again for you. It stays on for a few seconds and it automatically cuts off. 
All right, you press it fast two times, there's your flashlight. There you go. As you can see right there, shining on my hand, there's your flashlight. Now it'll stay on like this for two minutes and then the flashlight will automatically come off. And it's really bright too. Really, really bright flashlight. So go ahead and press it one time, cuts it off. You press it five times fast, one, two, three, four, five. And you'll notice this is the locator mode right down. You see the little LED, it'll flash once, I think every 10 seconds. If you look down here at uh, six o'clock, there you see a little blip. That's your locator mode for your watch. Uh, and basically that's gonna be really bright at night and it'll, it'll help you find your watch if you're outside. And this watch is really meant for people that go hiking, camping, that are very active, climbing, whatever. So if you lose your watch, you know, you can have this, this locator mode or it's also for a, if you're lost, you know, if, if somebody's trying to find you, this is going to help them find you. So you press that five times again, that cuts it off. Two, three, four, five. That cuts off the locator mode. Now, also, if you press the, and hold it for five seconds, press the pusher and hold it. One, two, three, four, five. Now it goes into the wrong mode. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five. It'll go into signal mode. There you go. Now anybody that's been camping in the Boy Scouts know what knows what that is. That's SOS. That's Morse code for S. You know for uh, uh, it's Morse code. That's your SOS signal right there. And it'll keep doing that for a long time as well. As you can see it flashing on my hand there. There you go. That's your distress signal. Okay. Pretty cool. All right. So let me go ahead and cut that off again. You hold the push her in for five seconds and that'll cut that off. There you go. So those are all your functions, the lighting functions. I think I got all of them there. You got Morse code, you got your blue, which I really like this blue because it evenly, evenly lights up that whole dial, which is really, really nice. I like that. Really cool. So anyway, there you go. Let's go ahead and cut the light back on. And oh, I'm sorry. Also down here at six o'clock, that's also your EOL indicator, which is end of life indicator. So we need to change the battery for the lighting functions. Uh, that's going to light up and let you know that you need to change. I think it'll flash uh, once every three seconds or something to let you know you need to change the battery. So it's a dual purpose LED down here at six o'clock. All right. Now let's look at the let's look at the chronograph function. Now this is where the hard to push um, part came in. This does take a little bit of effort to push. So you push it. That starts your chronograph, as you can see. And you also have your subdials over here to help your chronograph function. Push it again, and then you restart it. I don't know if you heard it. Let me try it again. I don't know if you actually heard how much noise that button makes when you reset it. Let's see if you can hear this. I don't know if you heard that, if the camera picked that up or not, but that's really loud. I mean, these buttons do take some effort to push. So anyway, really cool looking watch, really interesting watch. Um, and again, this is really meant for people that are doing a lot of outdoorsy activities so far as, you know, hiking, camping, um, you know, all that sort of stuff. So climbing, there you go. Really, really interesting. I mean, a hunter, I could see a hunter really liking, you know, wanting to use this watch. Anybody that does a lot of stuff outside, outdoors, that's really what the uh, the night vision is made for. So again, I wouldn't, I would, I can't try the watch on because it just doesn't fit. Um, we tested out the loom, we tested out the lighting functions. You can get this over at Victor Knox's website for seven hundred ninety five dollars. Uh, again, it's not a cheap watch, folks. It's a it's a Swiss made watch. Uh, it is expensive, and if this is your type of watch. I you know I highly recommend you go out there and get one. Because I, mean, I can really see a lot of people having, uh, you know, use for this utility style watch with, you know, the lights, um, the, the SOS mode, the signal modes, all that type of stuff. Really interesting watch. So anyway, if you like this video, please click on like. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please do so. I've got a lot of new subscribers and I appreciate each and every one of you. And again, if you like this style of watch, it's more like a utility. It really is kind of like the Swiss army of watches. <laughs> Get it? If you like this watch, go over there and pick one up, man. Uh, you get free shipping, you know, over $100. And uh, it's a quality, quality built watch. This is the real deal. I mean, this is a, this is a great, 
great kind of entry to mid-level Swiss watch. I mean, Victorinox watches are, you know, they're really, really nice watches. So there you go. All right, folks, until the next review, I will see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh,